Hello guys, welcome or welcome back. I'm not even starting my video off right and I just need to correct that. So hold on one second. All right, let's go. What's going on beautiful beings and conscious co-creators? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And a special thank you and a special shout out to every single one of you beautiful beings that hit that subscribe button. I'm very grateful for you guys. Thank you so much. Um, I'm back with another video. As you can see, I have three piles, one, two, and three. And we're just going to be talking about who you're going to marry. You know, um, this is, of course, for people who are not um, married um, as of this video. This is a timeless video, but we're just going to go into the characteristics and the personalities of your significant other, the person that you are going to decide to step into that stage and space of, you know, matrimony. Um, and this doesn't even have to be necessarily a Mary as far as, you know, with the government, because I have my own opinions about marriage certificates, but this is going to be basically, I'm just going to try to channel in messages and, you know, just kind of tap into the person that you're going to essentially commit yourselves to for a, uh, a, a significant period of time in a very serious way. So something similar to marriage or marriage for those who that resonates with but basically we're just going to keep it very very simple and i'm just going to say who you're going to marry but take from that what you will um i'm not going to ramble too much just make sure to remember that if you haven't hit that subscribe button and became a member of our beautiful kaleidoscope that we're building here on the youtube platform go ahead and hit that subscribe button and i also have my little Demi Goddess uh, tarot Instagram link right there. Well, not link, but it's a picture to tell you how to get how to find me. Um, but yeah, you can check that out too if you'd like. Uh, also, I do do private readings if you want something a little more specific um, past the general readings that I do here. So if you want to, you know, get a private reading from me or you're just interested in pricing pricings, uh, the information is going to be in the description box down below. Okay, so now we're just going to go ahead and jump right into this video. So um first things first wow first things first um i have three piles so again we said pile number one pile number two and pile number three i want you guys to kind of just you know tune in tap in pause the video if you need to clear your mind take some deep breaths listen to some meditative music if you want um and yeah i just want you guys to really find that quiet place in your head and then i want you to come back and pick the vid the pile that resonates best with you okay um and yeah that's it really super simple um the timestamps are going to be in the comment section um so i'm going to go ahead and jump right into pile number one and then pile number two and three i will see you guys at your selection so go ahead and check the comment section for your timestamp. okay all right let's go Okay, welcome group number one. We're gonna go ahead and jump straight into your pile. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the first couple of cards. So we have Uranus, that's genius, all right? And we make sure that's in the frame. And then we have fourth house roots. Okay, and these are definitely just going to be uh, intuitively um, red. So right off the top, I'm seeing that the person that you're going to be marrying is um, a very smart and inquisitive person. This is a person that has a zest for learning and knowledge and expansion as far as intellectually. Okay. Um, I'm seeing this as somebody that's really um, specific and a little anal as well um, as far as, uh, you know, um, just like anal, like almost, I don't want to say, I don't want to say OCD, but kind of like OCD, just very like particular about how they like their stuff. Like, I feel like they are not messy or slob or like a slob or any kind of way. Like they're very clean people. Um, they're very just meticulous and anal. And so that may compliment you, um, or it may cause you to, you know, um, it may cause you to kind of change a little bit of your ways as far as your lifestyle is concerned, but I do see this person as being someone who is very uh, meticulous. Um, I see this person as being a little more on the serious side as well. Um, someone who has a, a sense of humor, but also uh, kind of just, you know, is, is very kind of like mysterious almost like, 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 you know, like they're not, they're not too open to everything. You know, this is a person that probably spends a lot of time observing, learning, reading, and um, a little bit more quiet when it comes to socializing. Um, so this may be a situation in which you are the opposite and the whole opposite attracts vibes could be. 
uh, apply to you guys, but I am seeing your partner as just being someone who definitely has their nose in the books and is very serious about um, evolving past where they are now as far as perception. Like they're constantly growing and improving. And I do believe they're going to require that of their partner too, just to let you know. Um, fourth house, uh, roots. I feel like this is a person who um, is very serious. Did I just kick the camera? Oh, I always kick this. Okay. Fourth house roots. I see I see your partner as being someone who is also in the same sense as being serious about their studies. They're serious about their family as well. They take family very seriously. Um, it is something that is a, a, a actual decision. This is not someone that's just going to have um, kids with all types of people. Why are you not focusing? All right. Sorry. I don't know why I wasn't focusing, but, um, I see your partner as being, uh, a person that is very serious about family and very serious about procreating and who they're procre procreating with, who they are, um, expanding their family with. Um, I see this as being someone who's very, who's going to be very much involved in your children's life, whether you have children now or you have children with this person. Um, this is someone who takes that very seriously. Um, and they play a very, they will be playing a very active role, um, in your child's lives. I just want to say that as well. Um, this is someone who also is pretty close with their own family. And so it will be something that is, he's, he or she or they are going to look for and their partner is someone who um, has a same love for family and just being around other people that are like-minded um, as them. But I do see them as being someone that is very uh, close uh, and connected with um, their siblings, their mother, their father. Um, it's very tight-knit family. I don't see them coming from a very large family and that may be aiding in why they're so... Um, so in, intent on having a, a family of their own that is similar to the structure that they grew up with. Um, I feel like both parents played a very active role or whoever their guardian was played a very active role and it has um, contributed to how they look at family and wanting to have a family of their own. They do want a family of their own. They do want kids, but it is something that is a very serious decision that they are not going to make lightly. And that's also why I feel like um, the person that you're going to marry doesn't have kids because they haven't came across that person that makes them want to say, all right, I'm ready to be a parent. I'm ready to, um, you know, to uh, create life with this person. Um, this is someone who takes it very seriously. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, let's go into, uh, I don't know this card. I think this is a Doreen Virtue card, but I don't remember exactly what it is, what it what the name of it is, but, um, this is, uh, this card says school and it says the answer that you're seeking involves going to school. Like I said, your, your person, this, this, your, your, your spouse, your partner is very studious. Um, they, I, like I said, this goes, this goes, uh, hand in hand with the, um, uh, Uranus card because it's really just saying, um, you know, they are very serious about studying and expanding their knowledge base. Um, it's something that they take seriously. This may be someone that is, that is going to be going back to school or, or, you know, is currently in school when you meet them. Um, this is someone who doesn't just really stop necessarily at getting their associates or bachelor's degree but someone who goes into possibly getting their master's or doctorate's degree because that's how serious they take their studies. And I feel like for some of you all, this will be someone that is in the field of uh, philosophy or mathematics. Um, and that's just what I'm getting for, for, for right now. I'm seeing that. Um, they're very mathematically inclined. Um, and they have, like I said, there's just this natural zest for knowledge. They've been like that for a long time and they will probably leave this earth being in the same exact way. So you're just going to have to get used to a house where the library is filled with books or they have their own office this area where they spend a lot a lot of their time just reading and um challenging challenging themselves to expand uh and so also keep that in mind that when you do meet and marry this person you know you will probably if you if this is not something that you um 
are are like now like if this is not naturally you like a studious person i do feel like this this partner of yours is going to inspire you to want to um, expand your knowledge base as well so i don't see any resistance uh towards this person and yourself at this moment in time but yeah like i said um they're they, they're they're either in school or going to be in school for a long time they just they just you know they like to study and um like I said, this person is very intelligent. Um, this person is someone who is not going to have just random conversations that don't have any meaning. This is someone who um, is attracted. It, like, have you ever heard that word sapiosexual? Like, this person is attracted to knowledge and 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 stimulating conversations about things more than just you know the the basics. You know. Like, this is not a person that's going to get anything out of asking you what your favorite color is. But instead, this person's going to ask you, you know, well, what is your life purpose? You know, like what, you know, like that's the kind of person that you're dealing with right here. So just keep that in mind, group one. Um, now I'm going to go into my um, shaman deck. So the first thing we have, first thing we have is the king of bows. Okay. And so I'm looking at this card. Oh, and then also, hold on, we have the Nine of Bows as well. So I'm looking at this card, and I feel like uh, Nine of Bows tells me, uh, I said it before, but it definitely reinforces the, the concept of um, this person is very, uh, you know, to themselves, uh, I would dare to say they're introverted. They're not, they're not the most social of, of, of the bunch. They're definitely not the most social person that you've met or will meet. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that they don't, they don't like people or they can't socialize. It's just that, um, because of how they think it's not, as common in this day and age right now. And so they just find solace in just being, um, or they just find, um, they just find peace in being by themselves. Um, and I feel like um, that has that has been something that they've learned through past experiences with this nine of bows card right here. I feel like they've had experiences, negative experiences and encounters with people who just didn't understand them um, and it caused them to kind of retreat and withdraw a little bit. So they're not really a big fan of city life. I want to say that too. This is somebody that may possibly come to you after you guys get married and say like, let's move out in the country. I think country life uh, is something that resonates most with them because um, they don't really like noise. They don't like a lot of commotion. And so being out in the country or even just being, you know, maybe near water or nature of any sort is something that is definitely extremely important to your partner um so that's a characteristic that they have they're very na nature inclined and they're they would they're the kind of person that would prefer to be in nature than to go to a party if that makes sense um but also this uh king of bows just tells me that they have a quest to um of knowledge i mean that is that is one of their purposes is to just um expand their knowledge and and their knowledge base to a certain place and they might even go after that and start going on speaking engagements or writing books i see them writing books as well that also co correlates with the school card but like i said your partner is just a very studious person a very uh, a very um a person is not necessarily a dreamer, but one that is very practical, uh, very anal, likes their, likes their stuff a certain kind of way, and definitely wants to get to a certain place where they feel like they've learned uh, or mastered a certain skill, and then they're going to probably go back and teach that. So this could be also a potential teacher, professor as well, um, someone who has mastered something and then decides to go back and explain it and help other people who are interested in that. Um, but I definitely see, like I said, also with the king of bows, I definitely see your person as being very calculated and not in a negative way. Cause I know a lot of people will, will refer to calculated as, um, people being manipulative or people who, uh, you know, mean, you no good, or, you know, mean you just don't mean, mean you well. And your person is not necessarily that it's just that they, every, they like plans. They like things to be planned out. They are not one for spontaneity. Um, they're, they're the person that likes to write out things in planners and schedule stuff six months in advance. That is who they are. Um, and I feel like, because for some reason I am feeling like some of you guys who picked this, I'm saying a lot of stuff that 
probably is not you. And so I really feel like this is your this is your compliment, uh, the compliment to you. This is the yin to your yang. So this is going to be someone who is going to inspire and encourage you to improve in ways that you feel like yourself. You've probably act, told yourself like, man, I wish I was a lot more cleaner or man, I wish I was a lot more organized. Well, your partner is organized and your partner is going to help you um, to improve in those areas because um they have they have spent a considerable a considerable amount of time doing that also i want to say that this person is a little older um i would say that this person is not going to be in the late in the early 20s but more so in the late 20s uh to mid 30s uh cuz like i said this person is going to be spending a considerable a considerable amount of time in school and studying and so dating is not a big thing for them they don't date often so when they do meet you it's going to be almost like a magnetic connection um, because they're not really out playing the field. They really don't care about that kind of stuff. So, you know, this is someone who does not have um, a plethora of people as their exes or, you know, whatever. That's not really them. They don't really care about stuff like that. Um, so I just want to put that out there as well. Uh, and then we're going to just go into um, a deck that I've never used before. And I didn't read the book. So again, this whole reading is going to be completely just intuitive based. So uh, understand that. So anyway, um, the first card is innocence. Second card possibilities third card is creator all right so let's start from the first card that I pulled which is innocent so um, like I said this person is very is very um, kind like I said they're calculated but um, in a in a very uh, uh, in a very just I like things a certain way way a certain kind of way but at the same time they are they are they're sweet people uh, this person and then if you can see the guy here I'll show you guys hold on if you can see right here he is holding a um a grasshopper and you know there's cherry blossoms in the background and it's an older gentleman your 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 person is um pretty wise um definitely someone who has spent many lifetimes here on um this planet and um each time they come back there there I feel like this person every time they come back here it's with this quest to learn more and so your person is already coming off wise and that's why they don't do things the norm the way that everyone else is doing them and they really don't care they they have no intentions of being a social media star they have no intentions of being the most popular person on the planet in fact if they can leave this earth just as quietly as they came then they are very happy about that so that's something to keep in mind but um also with the with this uh man it just tells me that your person is wise and also like i said your person is just very much in tune and attached to nature um and that's why i said earlier i mean it's it's funny that it's picked because I, like i said i don't look at my cards before I film, I just uh, pull them intuitively and then put them aside and so I'm ready to film. But the fact that this card came out as innocence and um, the imagery in that picture, it just really tells me that your person is um, probably going to be spending its days, especially when the family uh, is established, is spending their days in the country, on their land and, you know, so that's something that, you know, I think that if you're not looking forward, forward to it now, when you meet this person and you realize how amazing they are, you're going to be okay with it because you may be a city person now, but you'll be in the country. <laughs> um, second card, uh, second card was the possibilities. Um, and that, that just tells me that, um, there is, um, they are, there's so much opportunity for you guys to learn from one another, um, there is no cutthroat, just like I said, with the opposites attract, because your person is so calculated and you are probably not. And there's this yin yang emo like energy going on with you guys. You are going to also come into this person's life and show them, hey, it's OK to be a little spontaneous. Like, let's go somewhere like let's plan a trip. And your person is going to learn to kind of loosen up just a little bit, because like I said, with this nine of bows over here, um, your person has through past experiences that were just undesired experiences they have learned to kind of just close off a little bit stick to themselves because they have figured out that that is just the best way to be the less they are around people the less they have to explain be around you know just it's it's a lot easier to be by yourself for this kind of person however you're going to come in and show them like hey you can open up to me um i don't know if this is someone that's going to immediately you guys meet and it's going to immediately be 
like romance off the bat like yeah let's do this let's get married I do think this is going to be someone that's probably going to start off as a friend because you're going to meet this person and you're probably going to just not really understand them but there's going to be something about them that just draws you in and so you're going to spend a little bit of time really getting to know this person um so like I said this isn't a love at first sight vibe that I'm getting from this person. This is someone that's going to end up growing on you and it's going to get to a place where you're just like, you know what, this makes so much sense. This person feels so right. That's what's going to end up happening. And But the possibilities between you and your partner are endless because you guys complement each other in such a beautiful way that you're constantly learning from each other. And when you're learning, you're growing and that's just beautiful all across the board. Now, the last card that was picked is uh, the creator. And I feel like you guys, um, your your partner, uh, this uh, significant other, spouse, whatever, they are very... Um, spiritual as well um and i don't know i don't i don't get the vibe that they are like a traditional um christian but i do feel like they are spiritual in the sense of again and i, I keep referencing the nature thing because i just want you guys to really understand how important nature is to your partner because it is important for to them that they are in a in a space that is peaceful and untouched and untainted by man for the most part and so I feel like the re part of the reason they, they need that is because with, even with this creator card, like they, they need to be tapped in, tuned into mother earth, mother nature and, um, grounded. They, they, they work best when they are grounded. So that means they need to be able to have a space where, you know, they can go outside barefoot and just sink their, their, their toes into earth and just like, just release and just cleanse themselves like that's how they cleanse themselves and I know that might be a little left for some of you but like there are really there are really um beings out there that just only need to be outside and they feel centered that is your person you know so that's what I'm saying it's super important that when you guys meet and you start to realize okay this is the person that Demi was talking about this it's important that you not hold resistance to this future upcoming statement of we I want to go and get some land and build a house and be out there in the na in nature because that person needs it to stay connected okay so I hope this resonates with uh with those that it resonates <laughs> That doesn't even make any sense. If this resonates with you, and I hope it does, but if it does resonate with you, Ashe, I'm so grateful. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Once again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Um, but I'm going to see you guys in my next video, which I am planning on being on Thursday. I'm planning on releasing the video on Thursday. I'm trying to upload three times a week. Ugh, send me good vibes, guys, because <laughs> so something always ends up happening. But anyway, um, I'm going to upload a video on Thursday. I'm speaking that out there now. So come back on Thursday for the next video. Um, I'm going to be talking about past lives. Ooh. So, uh, yeah, come back on Thursday. But I'm going to go ahead and go to group number two, and I will see you guys on Thursday for my next video. Okay? Bye. Okay, what's going on, group number two? All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start uh, talking about the cards that were picked for you guys, okay? So the first card we have here is the air element, okay, which is representing communication, all right? The second one I have is the Cancer, I feel, okay? And so, yes, there's a possibility that um, your person has uh, cancer in their chart. Um, it could be uh, definitely sun, moon, rising, or it could be just in the ways that they love your Venus or even in the way that they communicate. Why is this going out of frame? Hello? All right. Thank you. Um, but... I want to say that your person uh, is definitely someone that is in tune and has a, a really a real love for people. OK, um, you your person is a people person, essentially, is what I'm trying to say. Um, they are a natural empath. They are a natural extrovert. Um, they love being around people. Um, they even and, and, and the thing is, they they just love um, they love being able to assist in any sort of way they can. I do see that as well. Um, they are, they have many close relationships. Uh, so if you are a person that picked pile number two, understand that jealousy cannot live 
uh, in this in this union whenever you meet your partner, um, if you haven't met them already, um, because this person has a real love for um, just connections and con connecting with other people. Again, communication is here. So your person um, spends a lot, a large part of their time um, interacting with other people and they are a great um, speaker of sorts um, and I, that's what I was going to say this person is a, they one of the characteristics they have is um, just being able to naturally like they they have a certain energy about them that makes people gravitate towards them why why are you doing this to me <laughs> sorry guys oh my gosh all right, I'll just keep my hand here. Um, they have a natural, um, just just this this thing that pulls people to them. Um, this could be a teacher. This could be a coach, a motivational speaker that you meet. Um, this is someone that basically has a lot of eyes on them. And that's why I was saying you guys can't be, um, hold on a second. All right, guys, I'm sorry. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, I'll just leave my hand here. Um, but anyway... Um, so yeah, your partner is a, someone that definitely has a lot of eyes on them. And so for that reason, um, I would just say I'm cautioning that because I know jealousy is an emotion that a lot of us who are not doing our shadow work will tend to have, and it just can't live here with your partner. Um, because like I said, they're, they're, they get a lot of attention and, um, and, and they do that because part of their calling here is, um, to help people and to uh, bring out the best in people. They have a natural ability to do that. Um, so that's what I'm saying. I mean, speaker, counselor, psychologist, psychiatrist, they are in the business of helping people, essentially, and, and, and talking to people as well. So just keep that in mind. Um, now I wanted to go into the next car, which is, it does say study. And um, it says reading, research, education, um, um, helps to gain confidence uh, and clarity. Um, and this person is right. Well, your person is is someone who takes their craft seriously and serious enough to constantly uh, whatever. And it's and this really could be a psychologist or psychiatrist because um, they are in a field that is ever evolving or they could be a motivational speaker. I think I said that, too, but they are in a field where this could be. Um, this is a evolving field. Like this isn't a once you learn the material, then that's it, you're done. This is a field where um, they're gonna have to constantly be updated on the the, the latest uh, you know mechanisms, the latest uh, tools. Um, uh, oh, sorry, I think my. I don't know if this is crooked or not, but basically they have to stay up to date with what's going on. Okay, especially the way technology is going. They have to know what what's going on, what's the newest, latest, and greatest thing, and so uh, a lot of that's going to require a lot of research. So your person's going to be, oh, excuse me, your person is going to be someone who is um, very serious about staying up to date with, um, uh, you know, the research and the education factors. Um, this is someone who's probably going to be going into continue continuing education often throughout your union and um, this is something they definitely keep in mind um, and also like I said this person um, and I, I think I said this in the other other one too but they may they may even just because of this study card they may even be in school of some sort as far as teaching um, but like I said I don't feel like that I don't feel like that is the biggest thing that I'm feeling, I, I feel like that's like maybe for one or two of you who watch this video, but I feel like most of you all, this is someone who definitely has a social media presence. This is someone who has figured out how to capitalize on having an audience and helping people through those throws those ways like I said your the person is a very amazing communicator and I think that's one of the ways in which you will if you haven't you will meet your 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 person that you're going to be marrying because um they're out there so it's almost like you know you it doesn't take much for you to find them but I feel like you will stand out like a wild card to them okay if that makes any sense um next card I next cards I have are my shaman deck cards and so the first card is the eight of bows 
And just like I said, even with the eight of bows, like if you can see like this person helps, this person definitely, oh, side note, because I, I do want to make sure I say this. I should say this in the intros, but I don't look at my cards uh, after they are pre-picked. I, I intuitively pick these cards and then I put them aside until um, it's time to record and then I put them out, pull them out. So um, these aren't cards that I meditated on after picking them. So just want to let you know that. Um, but eight of bows I'm looking at. And even with this card, if you can tell, like he is in the process of helping someone, uh, assisting someone who, who looks um, very weak and unable essentially. And this just goes right into, even with this, like the cancer, I feel like this person is an empath and they know exactly what someone needs. They are able to, they are, they are able to decide to, um, decipher that and be of help in whatever way they need to be. And so that's why I'm saying you can't really, um, just keep that in mind that your person is going to have a lot of interactions, communications with other people, relationships with other people, and um, they just they just came here to help. That's really what they came here to, to do. Uh, the next card is going to be the um, was at the knave of uh, knave of stones. Sorry, I cannot talk. The knave of stones, and so uh, this is this is so beautiful because like they they their outlook on life is they just they have the ability to see love in everything and that's again what makes them such a um such a, a pleasant experience like it's so pleasant to be around them they're so sweet and so kind and can make even the most grumpiest angriest person smile and and for that reason like i said you just they just people gravitate towards them they have really been able to um overstand how to open up their heart chakra and their heart space and live from that and so because of that they they are definitely the more optimistic glass is always going to be half full with them never half empty you know they have the ability to see the bright and positive side of everything and people love that and and you love that and they just they're just naturally they're just sweethearts your person is a legitimate sweetheart and um that's really again that's what makes what they do with communicating with other people and being of help to other people that's what makes them that's what makes them so much more effective is because they come from a place of not being judgmental they come from a place of being able to naturally understand and with that empath nature they're able to easily put themselves in anyone's shoes um, to understand what they're going through or what they're feeling and so that's also something that I am seeing with your uh, your spouse your significant other uh and then the next three cards i are new card or well they're not new i've had them since october but is this crooked guys i'm so sorry hold on okay i don't know if i made that more crooked i'm not sure but anyway <laughs> Um, the next couple of cards are cards from a deck that I haven't used since I bought it, which was months ago in October, but, um, you know, I just felt called to use them today. I haven't read the book, so these are definitely going to be, um, strictly intuitive based off of what I feel when I see these cards. So the first card is going to be inner voice, right? And as I said before, your partner is going to be very, um, empathic very intuitive um uh, you, per, your person's definitely going to connect this is similar to the high priestess card um um so you know they're they're basically they're really they're really going to be good at and like i said i mean it complements the knave of stones too because like i said they have the ability to see um they have the ability to see love in everything and you can only do that by really well one you can do that by uh kind of going through the shadow work of of breaking down the traumas and the negative experiences that you've had thus far and being able to come from a place where you've resolved those issues and you decide that this is all part of the experience but also um Seeing love is in everything is understanding the non duality of you and everything else on this planet. That's a little deep, but 
if you get what I'm get if you get what I'm throwing, then then that was definitely for you. But overstanding that you know you are in everything. You are no different than the person next to you or the person across from you. Um, that there is some of you in everything, and so the concept of seeing yourself and seeing the love in everything is definitely a more non duality. And um, the higher you vibrate, the easier you'll the easier you'll be able to do that. Um, but your person has definitely figured out a way to do that. And so for that, they they have a very Zen-like energy about them, a very calm and, and peaceful energy, which again, makes for a great, uh, uh, you know, speaker, counselor, advisor, any of those sorts of things where the field is centered around helping people advance in any kind of particular way. So that is definitely something that your partner, your significant other, your husband, wife, whatever you call them, that's definitely something that they're going to have. Um, next card is breakthrough. Okay. And again, this complements all of the other cards is essentially where I, I say like your person has, um, not only figured out a way, um, th not only figured out a way to, um, uphold this non-duality standpoint and vibrate from a place where you know they're they don't see themselves as being separate but also they help other people get there too and so that's why I definitely with that card I'm definitely leaning more towards uh your partner being someone of a um more spiritual psychology or spiritual motivation um your person may be uh, someone who just is, yeah, like I said, spiritual advising. That's really what I mean to say. I'm not even going to push further uh, with that. And then the last card here is participation. And, and like I said, your partner is someone who has to be a part of things and has to, as far as they elect to do that, that's something that they prefer to do. They prefer to live their lives being a part of people's lives. Um, they prefer to live their lives having many relationships and connections and always being of help and service to other people. Um, they, I see them doing retreats. I see them um, kind of just taking a definite active role in their purpose here, which is to help assist, progress uh, forward the people that are meant to be in their lives, okay? So that is something that your partner, these are the characteristics, okay? Um, some something that I will say for you, like I said, uh, aside from the jealousy thing, I think just playing a more supportive role in in assuring your partner that you believe in their dream and that you support them and that you will do, you know, essentially you want to help them or I, I don't definitely feel like I don't definitely geez. I definitely feel like whatever it is that you're supposed to be doing here, because I didn't pull cards for that, but whatever you're supposed to be doing here on this planet is going to complement your partner. So you may not necessarily be doing the same type of thing that they're doing, but it's not going to be something that's not complimentary. Um, but like I said, when you do meet this person, it will be a definite like, like, oh my gosh, who is this person? And they probably are used to getting that, but they're going to have that same thing for you. And that's how you're going to know it's different. Okay. So that's what I have for you guys. Super quick, but effective nonetheless. Um, I hope that you uh, resonate with this. If you did, Ashe, I'm super grateful for that. Um, I am going to be uploading a video on Thursday, God willing. <laughs> so uh, come back to me on Thursday for that video. We're going to be talking about our past lives, okay? Because I am mentioning lives in this video. So I feel like it's only appropriate if I talk about that on Thursday. So I'm making a video on Thursday. Come back for that. But I'm going to go ahead and go into the last group group three i will see you guys on thursday for my next video don't forget to like comment subscribe share the video this is timeless so share it with people all right and yeah i will see you guys on thursday all right bye all right group number three last but not least um we're gonna go straight into um your reading about you know who's this person that you're gonna marry what's going on with them all right so um, oh, by the way, um, these cards were intuitively picked up front. Um, I do not look at my cards until it's time to read them. So everything that I'm doing is going to be literally me looking at these cards just like you and just intuitively gathering the messages that need to come forth from that. Just want to put that out there. I should put that in the intro, but I keep forgetting. So anyway, first card we have is the Pisces, I believe card. Okay. Second card we have is Pluto transfer. Oh my gosh, I've been having so much difficulty with this camera today. This is the Pluto transformation card. 
All right. So that's it. Those are the two cards we have up front. Let me just go ahead and go right into it. So the person that you have, that you are, um, going to end up marrying is someone that is all about the process. They are constantly pushing themselves and not just, not just like mentally and not just spiritually, but definitely physically as well. Um, transformation is really just all about expansion and movement and going towards something, being different than you were before in whatever way that it resonates with your partner in that moment. I definitely see your partner as, as being someone that goes through seasons. Your person is not one that is going to be the most stable. I definitely see your person as being a dreamer. This Pisces, I believe this Pisces energy of just being very um, intuitive and just always seeing things way deeper than surface level. Your person has a natural ability to see that your person may be actually like legitimately psychic. Um, any of the Claire's clairvoyance, clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentient, any of the, vo any of the Claire's, but, um, I definitely see your partner as, as having a, a, a just knack for seeing things way beyond the surface. Okay. Even with that, like high priestess, like just being able to tune in and tap in and see things beyond surface level. And so, yeah, I just see, I see your partners being a dreamer. I see your partners being someone that just wants to progress in the sake of progressing your person. I, I can already tell you is not going to be standard or typical. Your person's probably not going to have a regular job, a regular nine to five. Your person's probably just going to be more inclined to do something that they're just really good at and if they make money from it then they make money from it so if money is an issue or a concern for you I definitely think that you guys might want to set up some businesses that can make money for you while you guys or at least your partner can pursue the things that they're passionate about because I definitely don't see your partner doing something that is going to be a nine to five if they're not passionate about it because like I said, I'm getting super pat like I'm just getting passion across the board just right off of these two cards right here. Um, yeah, your person can't be stuck in doing one thing. Again, that kind of contradicts the Pluto energy here. So they can't be stuck doing one thing forever like some people can. They definitely need to progress and feel like they are progressing. Um, so like I feel like your person is the kind of person that would be inclined to say, hey, let's go to, if they live in the States, like let's go to Europe for three months. Or if they live in Europe, say, hey, let's go to Brazil for three months. Like the, that's the kind of person that you are going to be with. With. Um, and I feel like, I don't know this, I don't know, I'm not getting a strong vibe like I was with group one that, that you were the opposite, but I do think that it's going to be an adjustment for you to kind of get, kind of get with the program. But it, I do think it's going to be something that's going to be quite fun for you. Your partner is, is like, it's like living at a theme park. Like there's always going to be something to do. There's never going to be a dull moment because they're just, they're dreamers. Like they, they kind of go with the wind and, and it's, and it's really cool to see someone just be so careless, um, not careless <laughs> to be so carefree, you know? Um, cause that's what I see with them. I just, I just see them being very carefree and unattached to, to the materialistic things of this world. Uh, so that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> and then the next card is yoga and it says, uh, un underneath it, it says your life is enhanced by yoga, stretching and exercising. And, and like I said, your person is just, it's just very, I mean, even with the concept of yoga and what yoga is and being able to center and align yourself with, um, source or, you know, your creator, what, however you want to look at it. Um, and just kind of detaching, um, from the nuances of day-to-day -day living, you know, your person is just kind of, honestly, I want to say this without creeping you guys out and I hope I don't, but I honestly don't believe your person is even from here. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to go into detail about that. Whoever catches that caught it, but I don't feel like your person is from here. I feel like your person is from, uh-oh, your person is like from somewhere else and they just like came here to just have experiences. And so you guys are only going to work if you're going to allow them to have experiences and you are willing to have those experiences as well. That's the only way I really see this working. Cause if you go in there with any sort of resistance, they're going to be like, okay, I love you, but you know, I don't know. Um, I don't know if necessarily this person is going to have kids or wants to have kids. I think they may be open to it, but I definitely don't see at least right now, family presence being super strong. They might not be close with their family. I'm not sure, but, um, 
I'm kind of just seeing them just kind of floating. They, like I said, I don't see resistance to kids. So if you want kids, it's not that there's resistance. I feel like your partner is going to be more of a, you know, more lax, more chill about it. Like if, it, like you know, you may broach the a subject to them and they'd be like, oh, okay, cool. But they're not like, oh, I have to have kids or I definitely don't want kids. I see them being very fluid in that manner. Um, so yeah, I just, like I said, there has to be progression and growth and experiences for your partner and you would kind of, it would benefit you when you meet your person, if you haven't met them yet to kind of just, um, not hold resistance to that or to them essentially either. Uh, cause like I said, I see even with that Pisces, I like this Pisces card, your person is a little sensitive, so they're not going to do well with fighting, arguing, yelling at each. Like your person is not one to do that. They are very, um, cause like I said, because they see things below the surface, if you come to them and say, I'm mad, instead of just having it out with you, they're going to be trying to figure out like, well, what is the root reason why you're mad? Like, let's dig, let's really understand because you may not even really be mad at me. You may be mad about something else that has nothing to do with me or maybe I triggered something in you. So let's let's talk about the trigger instead of just yelling at each other. Like, your person is deep, okay? So you gotta be willing to like go there, okay? So ego, I'll put that out there. Ego cannot be in this relationship. And if it is, it has to be checked. You cannot let your ego run rampant in this relationship because your person, like I said, they're not from here, so they're not going to entertain it. They're just not. They're going to be like, oh, okay, uh, you go take a time out until you can um, kind of simmer down with your ego and we can have a conversation again. Because like I said, your person's not going to be one to have screaming matches with you. They're not interested in fighting and arguing and being mad for long periods of time. They prefer to be very light. And so, and arguing and all this stuff, that's very low vibrating energy and they just don't resonate with that, okay? So, the next couple of cards are from my shaman deck. I love this deck so much because of the imagery. So, the first card um, from the shaman deck is the seven of drums. And look at that, like I said, like, they're just carefree. They're so happy, like, even, and seven represents, um, seven a lot of times can represent uh, trying to find your center again. Um, it's right after five and six, which is a little bit of uh, the struggle cards in tarot. Um, but the seven, the seven basically tells me, seven of drums tells me that your person, even when stuff's not going the way they, 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 you know, even when stuff is not going the easiest or when they're, when there are transgressions or hardships that they're faced with, they're still just like, you know, don't worry, be happy. Like that is what I'm seeing with them. Like they're so unbothered. Like they, <laughs> they have, they have really just, they, like I said, they're, they're so unbothered. I can't even explain it any further than that. They don't care. They don't care about a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff that other people will care about. Your, your partner does not care about. And so it allows them to stay light and on their feet. If you notice, like she's dancing, she's on her tippy toes, her hands are in the air. She, and if you, I don't know if you can see closely, but like, um, her eyes are closed. Her eyes are closed. Like she, this is the epitome of just, I don't give a crap. Okay. I'm going to live. I'm going to do what I want to do. I don't care about, you know, obligate, like not like they don't care about obligations, but it's not something that's going to prevent them or stop them from doing something that resonates with them. They're just very light. They're like, it's like air being around them. Um, and it's very sweet too. Also, uh, 10 of bones. Ten of Bones is here, and so uh, I want to say that even, even, even in this, like, and this kind of also uh, goes, it goes with the Seven of Drums because it's like I said, it seems that even though there are times when it just seems like things are stacked up against your partner, your partner is always able to see the deeper me reason behind it. Your person is really good at learning the lesson. They don't hold on to stuff. Um, they don't even like, even in the worst moments that somebody could perceivably have like a legitimate breakdown, your partner is really good at trying to understand the lesson, the reason for it so that they can move on and continue to experience life in the seven of drums energy. So again, they come compliment one another because this is what they default to. So even when it does feel like this ten of bones, even when it does feel like it's intense, like I'm being like, like he's literally about to be attacked right now. Even in that, like he's like, I need to figure out why this is happening. Your partner is never a victim and they never come from a victim mindset, but instead they're one that's going to say, you know, 
I went through this. Why did I go through this? What did I attract into my life to make, to, to, to bring this situation into my reality? Like what is going on? Okay. And again, this complements the study, this, this yoga thing, like there, the yoga card is all of these cards really complement one another, which is so fascinating because like I said, your partner is just so unattached to this world. So even when the transgression happens, they're still able to just kind of rise above it, you know? Um, the next three cards I'm going to pull are from a deck that I've never used before, even though I've owned it for like, I don't know, three months now. And so I haven't read the book, but these are all going to be intuitively read. So just kind of keep that in mind. So the first card is Rebirth. Second card, Ripeness. And third card is We Are the World. So right off the bat, I'm looking at the three cards that I just pulled out. And like I said, We Are the World, I feel like your person's not from here. And so they kind of understand how things work a little bit better than maybe other people who have kind of um, recycled being on this earth over and over again. That's a little deep. So if you don't understand what I'm saying, just bear with me. But for those who needs to hear this, they need to hear this. So that's, that's who I'm speaking to. Um, your partner... Your partner has not visited this space over and over and over again like some people have. And so because of that, they don't have the um, experiences from past lives to really um, kind of tap in and say, okay, well, this happened and I, you know, this is supposed to make me feel this way because this is what everyone else, like they don't connect with people in that way. You know, they, they understand that everyone is a part of like a, like, okay. I want to say like this, like everyone is a scope that comes into this earth to experience the human experience. Your partner, however, does not, does, th that rule does not apply to them. I don't know if I'm losing you guys, but I'm just going to keep talking. So with this, with this, we are the world card, because your partner is the exception to that rule, they are able to connect with other people, certain types of people in a different way. They're the kind of person that can literally make best friends with the randomest person. And, and it's, it's no explanation as to why these people are friends because they literally have nothing in common, but it just works. Like that's kind of how your person is. Okay. Also with the ripeness, I want to say that your person, um, your person is very, uh, uh, how do I say that? Your person is very, okay, kind of like Pharrell, you know, the singer Pharrell, how he just never ages. He just looks exactly how he did 20 years ago. That's your person. Like your person doesn't age. And I don't know if it's necessarily the diet or if it's just that your person is just like your person has really good genes. Like your person, um, your person has really good skin. Um, your person is relatively healthy and your person ha is, is in really good shape. I want to say that your person's not, you know, overweight or has health issues. Your person is a very physically attractive being. And um, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that without going too left with it. Uh, and then rebirth. Uh, like I said, I just feel like that is kind of going hand in hand. Rebirth of care is going hand in hand with the Ten of Bones, with, where it's just like they're able to constantly learn from the, the cycles and the nuances of this life. And so because of that, because they're able to learn and grow, you know, it's always an opportunity when the next cycle goes around, like the next karmic, uh, uh, karmic cycle or the next lesson. Um, comes around, they're able to learn from it and keep accelerating. Your person just vibrates at a high level and it's high enough to where even the most negative stuff that happens just does not affect them. Like, look at this card. I'm going to show you. You see this card? Like, there's a lion and it's aggressively looking towards the little girl and she is playing her flute or piccolo. I don't know which instrument that is. But... Like, like I said, I've said this before, it's unbothered. It's completely unbothered because they understand that there's something deeper. And if you even see underneath that, that what, what, what's kind of almost hidden, but just still like maybe only some people can really do that because they did the work to be able to have that ability. She can see that like, well, he's on a camel, you know, and you know, so even in that, like, he's not really even that balanced because he's on a camel. I don't know if that makes sense, but basically she's able to see your person and I don't know why I said she, huh? I wonder if this is, um, a very, this, oh, wow. This is a very feminine energy, huh? 
your person is a very feminine, uh, and, and it could be a man, but it's just very feminine energy um, that your person um, exudes. Um, so that's, wow, very interesting. But yeah, your person is just very, very much able to uh, tune in um, to understand that everything is not always as it seems and that there's something far more deeper going on um, than what is just surface level. Your person overstands that. And so that's really what I'm seeing for you guys as far as who you're going to marry. Um, I don't know if I spooked some of you guys. If I did, you know, I, it wasn't my intention to spook you. But some of the stuff that I need that I needed to say just needed to be said for the people that were that clicked on this video that clicked on um, group three specifically. Um, so if it resonated with you, Ashe, I'm grateful for that. Um, I am making another video on Thursday. Well, it will be released on Thursday, and it's about past lives because uh, I know I spoke a little bit about your person not being from here. Uh, but I do want to talk about past lives and what we experienced there because a lot of times that can um, that that helps us understand some of the things that we're experiencing in this life. So if that's something that you're interested in, and you know, you know, kind of coming back to see, definitely come back on Thursday and. Um, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment on the video if you'd like. Uh, let me know what you guys thought. Like I said, if this resonated with you, Ashe, I'm grateful for that. Come back on Thursday. But yeah, I'll see you guys um, in my next video. Okay, bye.